What's going on, man? Welcome back to the basement. I'm Ron, and today we have a nice post combine rookie mock. We're going to do a couple of these. We have Bush in here from the Fantasy Stock Exchange. We did a video earlier over on his and Danny's channel doing an NFL mock draft. How are you doing here, Bush? Doing good. After we uh, recorded that one today, I went and played March 4th golf in Canada, which was kind of insane. It was like, I don't know uh, Fahrenheit wise what the temperature was, but it was like 15, 16 <laughs> degrees Celsius, probably like, I don't know, 50, 60 degrees. I don't know how warm it is for you guys, but very, very nice day out today. So that was nice. Love to see. It. I, I was actually going to mention that because I, I heard you say that yesterday or this morning. Yesterday, I woke up on Sunday I was bummed I couldn't get anybody to go out to a golf course, but I, I was fiending for it. Um, it's it's nice up here too, or down here as well. Um, people are asking for the link, so let's put, I'll put the link in here. That's probably a, a, an oversight by me, but we're doing rookie mock drafts. It's a super flex, tight end premium, post combine. Everything has changed. I figured, you know, we'll do a mock draft. We'll hang out. I'm sure it'll spark some discussion between me and Bush here. Um, all right, so there's the link if anybody wants to join. We got a bunch of heads in here. We got Peonia. We got Genji in here. We got Caleb in here. So with the, I just want to tell you, fine gentlemen, dinner on me when one of you guys hit 50K. We'll see. We'll truly see about that. We got James in here. What's going on? We got Spicy. I think I put the link in the chat. Yeah, I did. All right, perfect. Yeah, we were we were trading punches all summer last, last year. So whoever gets to 50 first <laughs> would be an interesting one for sure. Troy Franklin is a psyop. That's in, where are we at? Because I know you were telling me uh, Troy Franklin. What you said? I think Devonta Smith and Will Fuller were kind of the uh, the comps there. I know. Yeah. People were so I'm getting. I, I'm not gonna lie. Bit. I'm wavering a little bit on Franklin because my comp for him was Jamison Williams and Devonta Smith. So again, like two oh, yeah. receivers. He's veering towards a lot more Jamison Williams than Devonta Smith right now because yeah. I mean, you know, on film when you watch the two guys. Jamison Williams to me had issues like tracking the ball and his hands weren't like the strongest in the world. I also, I could kind of sense, I have a pretty good sense now. I feel like of guys who don't really work hard and guys who are kind of knuckleheads off the field. And I'm getting a little bit of that from Troy Franklin. Some people talked about, you know, the fact that his 10 yard split wasn't good is because he didn't train for his get off for the 40 yard dash and him weaving through the gauntlet. That means he doesn't really know what the drill's all about and stuff. I'm like, dog, can we just like, get one of these like long lanky receivers that's super fast that actually like is committed to playing uh football at a high level. I don't know. I'm getting worried on Troy Franklin. I'm not going to lie. Like the way that I had the second tier of wide receivers ranked going into the combine was Xavier worthy at four Troy Franklin at five, six was lad McConkey and seven was Brian Thomas jr. I flip flopped Brian Thomas jr. And Troy Franklin. So now it's worthy Thomas lad and troy franklin and honestly franklin might even be falling out of this tier entirely because it's just a vibes thing like i know it's kind of stupid to get this overreactive to the combine i'm gonna go back and watch more film on him before i actually end up doing that but he's kind of he's giving off like the same energy that i get from ad mitchell which is like man like the highs are high but the lows are kind of scaring me a little bit and i think when you're talking about that kind of risk reward they belong in the tier with you know jalen polk and xavier leggett and jalen mcmillan and you know, those type of guys in that third tier. No, I agree. I, I'm, I'm going to, as a, from a number standpoint, all right, I'm going to randomize this and get it going. But from a number standpoint, like he, he gives me like Jacob Sanders had a great tweet the other day where it's like at, at a certain point, like I, I know that he's not exactly in the same exact box, uh, Troy Franklin, but like at a certain point, I'm done falling for these analytic darlings that are like skinny and like Marvin Mims is one KJ Hamler's another like he kind of falls into that same bucket for me as those kind of like, you know, field stretchers, good analytical profile. But like, God damn it, man. Like I've seen this so many times. I know literally like it's it's difficult to just especially when I think when the NFL draft community is like, yes, this analytics guy that you analytics bros are hyping up has great film and he's a great player, then it's like, okay, I feel so comfortable betting on this guy. Like that's the Justin Jefferson, right? Justin Jefferson, yeah. great analytical dude. Film guys loved him. That's that's where it's at. So um, yeah, I, I feel you on that too. I wasn't a huge fan of Marvin Mims's tape. I actually wasn't a huge fan of Troy Franklin's either the first time I watched him, but I grew on him a little bit. So I'm going to go back to the drawing board on that. I get Caleb at 102. So I, I mean, I'll take the, I'll take the absolute oh, yeah. gift of all gifts here. Um, did you see the thing that uh, NFL draft scout or I don't remember who it was tweeted out that there was like eight or nine scouts that were 
pulled at the combine. Sorry, it wasn't NFL draft scout. I know that's totally the wrong person to quote. Um, and it was like, who are the best players at each position? And a lot of people answered, like, you know, five people said Caleb Williams. Two people said Drake May. One person said J.J. McCarthy. Jaden Daniels' name was not mentioned as the best quarterback in the class, which is kind of contrary to what we've heard, where I've actually been under the impression this whole time that the Jaden Daniels has been about above Drake May as QB2. This, this rookie draft, I, I don't mean to completely go out. Like, this rookie draft is off the rails right now. <laughs> like, we got Bo Nix at five. We got McConkey at six. Um, But, yeah, Jaden Daniels, it, it seems like I, I didn't see that report. I do think people are going to be low on him just because he didn't, like, he didn't comply, I guess, if you want to say that. Um, with like, he didn't even, he didn't even weigh in. I think people are going to be sort of a little bit put off by that, but yeah, I, I don't know that I'm buying it too much. I, I kind of would fall back where we were earlier today, where top three picks sounds about right. Um, especially the green light is dude. Lance has him as like, Lance has him as QB two and like in the same tier as, uh, uh, Caleb, but not that that, not that he's like a QB whisperer, but I think other scouts probably have a board that looks similar to that. Um, yeah, I know Lance is your boy. I'm, I'm not going to lie, dude. I, I think he knows what he's talking about with running backs. I think he, you know, he does a decent job with wide receivers. His quarterback takes are pretty off the wall for me. And you know, yeah. like I heard him say today that he doesn't even think Drake may has a good arm. Yeah, he's definitely a little bit all over the place. I'm going to go Rome here. I know I've been staring at the board for like 30 minutes. I don't know. But Rome, Rome and Bowers are the same to me. It depends on kind of how you value tight ends. Um, try and correct the yeah. board a little bit <laughs> for the people picking up yeah. the, end of the first round. It's uh, I I agree. I don't really use this stuff as gospel. I just think it's a good look into like I, I imagine there's there's quarterback rooms in the NFL or scouting rooms in the NFL that have a similar list to him where it's kind of all out of whack. Where you know, it's Daniels at two and then Nick's at three or however he has it. But yeah, they're not they're not gospel. It's really more uh, kind of projecting draft capital, I guess, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's hard because there's not a lot of scouts out there that have that give you an insight to film, like what yeah. you use it for, what Lance does, um, who have grades that go back as far as Lance's do, right? Like, it's not like you yeah. like you can trust certain people or whatever, but not a lot of their grades are made public. Not a lot of them go back far enough. Like, it's difficult because there's like, I wish we had like a database of like Daniel Jeremiah's grades and, you know, yeah, um, I agree, you know, Mel Kuyper's grades or whoever you trust, uh, you know, to talk about the draft or whatever, I think would be really I helpful really pay so. Daniel Jeremiah. <laughs> okay if what do we he, got uh, here so fork that over to me yeah literally I'm at I'm on the board here on 202 uh I mean my highest rated receiver currently on the board would be Troy Franklin like I said I'm a little spooked off of him I think you know depending on what we see with these running backs I think this is about the range that I think you could deviate into the RB1 spot whoever that ends up being I've been firmly in the camp that it's between Jonathan Brooks, Trey Benson, and Jalen Wright, whoever gets the best draft capital, the best landing spot. One of these dudes is probably destined to go back end second round, early third round, wherever the best case scenario is. I'm going to go right now. I think the leader in the clubhouse would be Benson, even though I yeah. think Brooks is the best running back, you know, if he were healthy in this class. It's just that, you know, with Brooks's injury, I think it's possible that he slides down a little bit. That same poll that I talked about with the quarterback position, they said, who's the best running back in this class? Benson got the, mo the most votes. So, you know, the NFL loves these big school guys. He was on a, you know, undefeated football team. I could see Benson, you know, he's got the size, he's got the speed, he's checking all the boxes. And most importantly, he doesn't have an ACL tear that he's coming off of like Brooks. I think Benson makes some sense as the RB1 potentially. Dude, I I completely understand. Like Jonathan Brooks, he looks good with the numbers, and I, like I I know people love his tape. Uh, like Lands, we talked about, is a great running back evaluator. He has him by far and away as RB one. But like investing in an asset, I know that he's going to essentially be okay for week one. But it's like, it's pretty brutal. It's a pretty brutal bet to make. You know, like day one, he's coming off a torn ACL, so you have to like kind of temper expectations on year one. It's kind of like. It's like almost what it, like valuing Javante heading into the season was. I guess it wasn't as brutal of a leg injury, but it's tough. Like the only reason that I was in on, and I think you too with Brees, is that we knew he was a freak athlete. Not that Brooks wouldn't have tested well, but you know we don't have the verified data that he is like the type of profile to bet on out of an ACL. So it is tough. I think I have him behind uh, Benson and Wright. If like you were to ask me right now, um, but yeah, I mean two hundred seven, I'd be fine with. So I'm kind, I am kind of picking, uh, splitting hairs here. What do we got? Yeah, available? his film was the best in this class, in my opinion. It wasn't by much. Like that's why I think I, I'm okay moving 
Benson and Wright over him if they get the draft capital and landing spot because the I mean, and it's not like Benson's the poster child for health either. He blew his ACL his freshman season at Oregon. So yeah, um, yeah, like I mean, Wright is and then and then when you watch these three guys, Wright is the most raw kind of Miles Sandersy where he scares you from like, is this guy even a good running back at times? Where you know the Tennessee offense, like we talked about this with uh, with Jalen Hyatt last year. Like there was, I heard Winks talk about this today, like 25% of the boxes Jalen Wright ran against were like five or less people. Like they spread Ooh. the offense out so hard. It's like, it's no wonder this guy averaged like seven yards per carry in this offense because he's got four, three speed and he's running one-on-one -on -one against defensive backs 90% of the time because there's no big beef up in the middle. Yeah, that makes a ton of sense. I I took him here just because it seemed like he's a good bet to get uh, draft capital. I debated Devontae Walker, or Xavier Levitt, Leggett. I'm not really excited about either of them. I'm curious, you, because I know uh, you definitely like JT Sanders a bunch. After him running a 4 6 9, like, where are we at? Because it didn't, I got to be honest, man, his relative athletic score, like, still was fine, like, 8 plus. It still wasn't terrible. He didn't jump um, either. And if he jumped, he would have been had a better score. Yeah, I agree. Like, I, I don't think it's like a, a, a death sentence by any means. Now, I don't know. It's tough because it's like, okay, maybe he drops around, but it's like draft capital, like kind of doesn't matter for tight ends. Like it's all a crapshoot anyways. Uh, I don't know. Like how, like, are are you moving him down at all? Or like kind of how are you uh, looking at JT now? Yeah. I mean, athleticism factors into my grade for tight ends quite a bit. Um, so he will move down a little bit. Uh, I already had some concerns with his film because he's kind huh. of a knucklehead. And honestly, this, I know this is, sounds really scary, um, for the fantasy community, he reminds me a little bit of OJ Howard. I'm not going to lie in terms of like mental mistakes <laughs> and like, um, you know, not really, he he's only been playing tight end. He has not been playing tight end very long. He's a very young prospect. So a good coach should be able to coach him up, but sometimes players just can't put things together. And that's the risk with Jatavian Sanders. I actually wish he would have went back to school. Honestly, I think he should have hmm. went back to school and played another year. Cause I think he would have been in a good spot there. You just said, you're not a big Leggett guy. I'm trying to convince the numbers bros to overlook the profile of Xavier Leggett. I, it factors into my grade. I obviously moved him down in terms of, uh, cause analytics is a portion of my grade when I actually, uh, when I grade these guys, but dog, like not a lot of dudes can run routes at the level that Leggett runs routes for his size and beat the shit out of Kamari Lassiter for four straight quarters, uh, against Georgia. Like he did, like I, his best, Season numbers are solid. They're not elite numbers, but they're solid. It's only one season of production. Maybe he was super immature and didn't take football seriously. Like we have no idea really what the case is with Xavier Leggett. I saw enough in his final season and I'm getting enough of a discount on him. Like I just got him at 302 here. I think in most people's rookie drafts, he'll be a mid to late second round pick. I'm getting him enough of a discount there that I think it's worth betting on him. He's not the next Jonathan Mingo, but that definitely is his downside risk. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think like I'd be fine with where you just took him. Um, man, this one's tough for me. I, like I'm fine with where you just took him. Like to me, I, I think I'd have right a little bit ahead just as like a, a day two running back over him. But I think they're all in the same tier. Um, like right now I am looking at like Marshawn Lloyd and Roman Wilson. I I don't know how you'd feel about it, but I think I'd have Roman Wilson over Xavier Leggett. Um, I, I would literally weird. sprint to the podium to take Jalen McMillan. If I were you, that would, that would be my, my, I just my thing. But again, I'm, Lloyd. yeah, Lloyd's a great Lloyd. Actually, I heard Jeremiah say too, like he, has, he might be RB one for some people and yeah. on their boards and stuff, which I thought was interesting. And I mean, Roman and Pierce saw too, like this class is pretty insane yeah. that you're going to get like, these guys are going in the second round, like Roman Wilson and yeah. Pierce all are going to go in the second round of the draft. Like I guarantee that that's how high they get drafted. And um, a guy like McMillan, too, I, I absolutely love him. I honestly, like, I tweeted it out when I was grading him. I was like, dude, like, I don't see a difference between Jalen McMillan's so uh, junior season or redshirt sophomore season and Jackson Smith and Jigba's on film. Hmm. On paper, it's obviously vastly different. On film, dude, Jalen McMillan's the same size as JSN. He's very good agility-wise. He's a little bit faster even than JSN ran. And he has the same slot versatility. Maybe he can play on the outside, but he's going to be a very good number two receiver in the NFL, I think. And I think a team like, you know, the Bengals to replace Tyler Boyd or um, I'm trying to think other teams that could use like a a power slot or whatever. Like he, he could be a really good option for them. Jets. Jets. Yeah. Jets would be a great spot for he's him. I there think in he's there in the third round. I, I would, I would love it. Uh, not uh, third rounds kind of in his range. I, I could see him going I, that feels late for Polk.
It is crazy. It is how, I know we say it every I, every year, but this is a deep class. Yeah. Oh, it is a deep class. I I tweeted this. Some me and Snoog were going back and forth on this on Twitter, and I said that the the three of the best twelve receivers in this class played for the University of Washington. Yeah. Like I I I, I think that McMillan and Polk are better than you know that next tier of Javon Baker, Roman Wilson, Ricky Pearsall. Um, even Malachi Corley and Devontae Walker, who are getting probably hyped up more than them. I think that McMillan and Polk are cleaner projections. My comps for either guy, like I said, was JSN for Jalen McMillan and Jalen Polk. My comp for him was Rasheed Rice and their RASs are identical. They're like the exact same. They're both six foot two Oh five or whatever. They both run like a low four five forty, but they both win with physicality off the top of their route. So it's like when you watch these guys play, you're like, why are they getting open so much? They don't look like great athletes. They don't look like they're going to break people's ankles as route runners, but they're both just like really strong at the top of yeah. their routes. And they like kind of push you off the same way that Rasheed Rice has done for Kansas City. I think that's the fun part about this class is the receivers are big. You know what I mean? Like we've like last year, like they were all tiny. Like we're taking Zay Flowers in the first and Addison comes in at like what, like 175, like, we're getting down guys 171. Who was I just looking at? Did I get no, I did not get sniped. Um, I'm gonna take Theo Johnson here. I mean, like fourth round, I think that he's gonna raise a ton after you know he put in a pretty crazy combine. Which for the tight ends, people love to say like don't overreact to the combine. For tight ends, you can kind of overreact to the t- uh to the combine for them. Theo Johnson, I don't have the numbers on me, but I, I know that he crushed it. He qualified as like I have like a freak archetype for my tight ends where if you just come in like super big, super fast, everything. He qualifies as that. I'm fine taking a, a shot on that type of profile in the fourth round. Johnny Wilson, I, someone in the chat saying Johnny Wilson to be a tight end. We'll, we'll truly see. I think that he's going to be like Claypool where he's going to be too stubborn to play tight end, but uh, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Because someone think, explicitly I mean, asked him at the combine, like, would you play tight end? And he was not having it. Yeah, no, literally. I think he he's too athletic to be a tight end, honestly, man. Like, he tested really well. I, I feel him. I, I wouldn't want to. If I played receiver my entire yeah, he's life, he's an Indianapolis come Colt, realistically. They're going to end up taking yeah. him. They always take these big athletes. Mo Ali Cox, head ass. Yeah. I think Ray Davis is interesting if Spicy's looking for a pick here. I think he has a chance to get drafted. Like, he's old and, like, he doesn't have a good profile at all. But the NFL really seems to like him, so he could get some decent draft capital. All right, so there's mock number one. We had some wonky stuff in the first round. We need the, I need the uh, the chat and the viewers to give us to give us something here. Um, all right, I'll start up a new one real quick. Why not? Yeah, I mean, Hefty Haas going Bo Nix and uh, Joe Milton in back to back rounds was certainly a choice. <laughs> Where uh, have you watched Joe Milton at all? Um, not in depth as like grading him. I my attitude towards like day two and day three quarterbacks is like, I'll watch them if their landing spot was interesting and they got decent draft capital. I'm going to have to probably do Rattler and uh, Pratt for our, uh, for our draft guide, but I'm not overly excited about really Joe Milton either, because like, if you look at his numbers, man, like the guy is not like, he can't hit the broad side of a barn. Like he can throw the ball, like moon (laughs) balls, like nobody's business, but he is so freaking inaccurate. He is like the war, all the worst qualities of Anthony Richardson last year. Yeah, I, I I just I just talk myself into just let him sit behind Rodgers for a couple of years. I would not do that. I think that's a waste <laughs> of a pick, to be honest. He's like he's already old as shit. He doesn't yeah. like I, I don't know. I just think he's like Tyree Jackson, kind of like we got excited yeah. about him briefly. Like I, I he might play tight end in the NFL. He's a, like, he's a Madden franchise I, hero. Yeah, like I, I just I don't think Joe Milton's all that good, to be honest. He, he's got a great deep ball, but that's pretty much about it. No, hundred percent. If he if he was good, he we would know it by now. Well, he played at like Michigan for a little bit and like sucked. And then he was Tennessee at- this past year. And, and you'd think he should have like crushed at Tennessee because they have like such a like if Hendon Hooker is out there crushing, um, in like their scheme or whatever, he should be doing better than what he did. Yeah. I'm trying to look now. Do you have any thoughts on Jalen Coker out of Holy Cross? I know that that's like a, the fringiest of fringe names. Yeah, I mean, that's a wild name for, for starters. Just a great <laughs> name. Just Jalen Coker. The guy just yeah, like Jalen Coker. The guy is just, just like he's cocaine bear energy right there. But I no, yeah. I honestly have no idea. I've never heard of him entire prior to the combine. It's obviously a small school guy. I might throw his numbers into the database, but honestly, I, I try and steer clear out of, of uh like really small school dudes because their numbers just look so sick and you get baited yeah. in. Yeah. 
that's the issue is he he him and Malik Washington are the only day three receivers right now that pop to be silver or better. Yeah, Jalen Malik Coker, Washington is my wide capital. receiver thirteen. I actually really liked his. Film yeah, you too. like him? Yeah, he's interesting. Short, yeah, but my like comp kind for him was like a Zay Flowers light, actually. Yeah, I, I I like that. I'm trying to think of short guy. I don't know. Short guy, tons of slot usage. We have definitely seen this one before. Um, but that's fun. Come on. I think you have it on. Um, I think you have it on Snake, by the way, with three RR as well. Yeah, I certainly do. All right, get that out of here. All right, thank God we caught that. I've been okay, roasted so we got a reasonable board that. that fell to us this time. No Bo Nix and Lad McConkey going off the board here. Um, for me, I think uh, <laughs> I actually prefer neighbors straight to Jaden Daniels. Like I, that's I'm not ever going to select that in a rookie draft because I'm I'm certain Jaden Daniels will go higher in startups. But if yeah. I'm sitting with a lot of 104s, I'm probably going to try and move down for quarterback needy teams because I think that neighbors is, you know, he's the third highest receiver grade or tied for the third highest receiver grade I've given since 2021. Only Marvin and chase have been better in his grade ties. Devonte Smith's actually better than Garrett Wilson's better than Drake London. So for me, I think neighbors is just that good of a wide receiver prospect to the point that I see way too many flaws with Jaden Daniels game. He can still be great, even if he's not a perfect quarterback at the next level. But for me, I think he's a little bit too risky for me to take over neighbors. So I'll just like, you know, if I have a one Oh four and I can trade down one or two spots and get Malik neighbors, I'm probably going to do that in a lot of leagues. No, I could see that. I, I it's, it's tough. Like it, the only reason to have him, the only, I mean, maybe not the only reason, but the only reason to have him over neighbors is really just positional value just in terms of making that bet. I, I agree. It's a, like, that's how uh, I was going to say, dude, like, it's funny. Like we all get so caught up in like tanking, I guess like the one one and the one two have like so much value, but like, if you're anywhere in like the three to five, like just missing the playoffs, like you're kind of chilling regardless. You know what I mean? Like they're all so bunched up. Yeah. I mean, even people who just made the playoffs are probably like sitting chilling with their oh, one yeah. sixes and one of sevens. Like they're probably just loving it. They're like, Oh, you know, I'm going to get like Odunze or whatever. And I didn't think I was going to get this good of a prospect with my pick. Where I'm curious where you're at on Brian Thomas. I know that you have him as like wide receiver five right now. Um, he had a I, I the way that I use relative athletic score, it's like a very small input in the model. But if you have a high enough base grade, it'll give you a nice multiplier. And Brian Thomas was in that range where it bumped him up to like my elite tier. Um, I'm sort of going back and forth on it from the number side of thing. Brian Thomas Jr. to me, like I, I could put him in the same tier as Odunze. Um, if the film community wasn't so adamant that Odunze is like the second coming of like an amazing receiver. Odunze's film is definitely better than Thomas's. I, I think yeah. it's hard to poke holes in Odunze's film. It's very easy to poke holes in his numbers, but his film is pretty hard to poke holes in. And I can poke a lot of holes in Brian Thomas's film where it's like guy ran a vertical route tree. You know, it was just, you know, wrist flick offense, deep ball central with Jaden Daniels. They played so, so uh, all out to stop his rushing that if, if Daniels had a big rushing day, it was just wide open receivers left, right, and center. And it's like, it's tough to knock a guy for being like such an integral part of his offense with neighbors on the field. He's still producing and all that stuff. But to me, he has a lot of development still to do. I'm going to make a pick here and then I'll continue on this. Um, I'm on the, uh, is exa okay. Zay's off the board, right? Yeah. He's off the yeah. board. I always look for him buried in the ADP because he's always like really low. Um, this would actually be a point in time where I'd be okay with Keon Coleman, but I actually think a Brooks would represent a, a tear break for me at running back. So I'm going to grab Brooks there. Um, but yeah, on Brian Thomas Jr., like my major knocks on him was the fact that he ran just a straight vertical route tree, which can work in the NFL level. DK Metcalf's been very successful doing it. Mike Evans was started that way before he developed more as a route runner. The low market share numbers are hard to knock him for too much because he played with Malik Neighbors. And then I just think he's a raw player. I don't think he's like up there football IQ wise, like ready to be a stud NFL wide receiver yet. It's nitpicky, but I think he kind of has like a bit of a better version of Nico Collins coming out of Michigan vibe to him where Nico, maybe like Nico's second year would be Brian Thomas's rookie season, if that makes any sense. Yeah, I, I completely get it. That's why it's funny. Like, I mean, we've been doing this for a while now. So, of course, we're learning from our mistakes. Like, I, I think I think 2021 me would have been like, no, nah, I'm putting Brian Thomas Jr. over Romo Dunze. Like, you guys can all pound salt. 
we are getting to a point now, like, the more that I look at the data, it's like, you know, Roma Dunze, not that he looks like these guys, but there are, like, weaker profiles to get pushed into the top 10. You like, your Kevin White. Now, these are obviously, you know, like, senior, super senior breakouts that I wouldn't really put him in the same t- bucket as. But, you know, guys that we're trying to sort of, like, filter for, I do wonder, you know, I, like, I guess you could put Mike Williams there as well. Like, you know, top 10 picks that, like, probably shouldn't have been top 10 picks. I feel like we're getting so good, like just from a scouting uh, perspective that I don't know that we'll see that again. We're like somebody who's just like so clearly shouldn't be a top 10 pick, you know, like your John Rosses of the world that that ends up happening. You know, I feel like if somebody does get picked top 10, it's probably for a good reason. Like, that's why I'm fine. I, like, I think in the past, I would have been a little bit more arrogant with like, oh, well, you, uh, the film bros are idiots with Odunze. Like his numbers don't really say that he is a step above everyone else. But um, at a certain point when like Daniel Jeremiah has been like, what, like his first overall player or whatever he has him at it's like oh um, he's like his fourth player or something yeah like fourth that, best yeah. player on, on his big board and lance ha- has like a, a top 10 grade on him too you just have to kind of submit to it yeah no I, I agree with you i think the same is true for fantasy adp too like i mean because yeah. of like underdog we're not pushing up mike davis's anymore like that's never happening again honestly yeah. i don't think it, like in home leagues maybe it will still happen where people are completely disconnected from the ecosystem altogether but like sharp for leagues and the NFL draft included, like it's just simply, I just don't think it's going to happen again where we're going to see these guys. Um, we're all getting way better at this. Um, and it's kind of showing itself out. Like, I mean, if you look at the draft classes from 10 years ago, like the wide receivers that went in the first, like the hit rates are massively different yeah, than they are now. Like we're hitting way, way higher rates at this point. The running backs too. Like if you get a running back in the first round, like outside of like Najee Harris, like it's been since like 2018 that we've seen some bad RBs go in the first round, um, like Penny and Michelle and those guys. Yeah, and even Mich- Michelle's Michelle's a funny one. Yeah, um, Michelle was kind of good. I don't know how that that didn't materialize. The, dude, have you ever seen Sony Michelle's high school stats? Like his coach burned him into the ground. Like we're t- we're talking like Zeke Elliott levels of usage. His four years <laughs> in high school, Sony Michelle, just like zero regard for his health. Yeah. I'm I, I'm just going to like if we're going to let Xavier Leggett fall to the third round, he's going to be on every single team that I have because I have him ranked literally as a top 16 player in this class because yeah. his highlights and his high end film is that good. He's DK Metcalf without the shitty agility scores, really like that's honestly what his profile looks like to me. And I know Metcalf was younger coming out and, you know, had a better like market share production numbers potentially too, like. I don't know, dude. Leggett, I think people are really, really getting it. This is the guy that 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 analytics bros are like, I'm never drafting this dude because his profile is that bad. And like, I get it. It is that bad. I've graded him as such. But like his film is is top five in this class. Yeah. I the What's really what's kind of pushing him down a little bit for me is Lance has him as a 617, which is like. I mean, it's not high at all. It's like kind of next to Brendan Rice. Um, but I have him in like, I, I have him in this big jumble tier of like pretty much after what's this like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Like once I get down to like Keon Coleman, Lad McConkie area, I'm fine with him as high as like wide receiver nine. I can get there when we, I can that's put him literally over like where I have him. Walker, so exactly Roman Wilson. Me. Yeah. I, 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 I really like Roman Wilson, even though the numbers don't really, uh, prove much for him. I just like that. He's like very versatile in terms of just like slot usage. He's, you know. Good catching the ball, dynamic. Um, I, I do kind of believe in the Michigan stuff of like he wasn't asked to do a ton, so it's hard to take all of his stats at face value. It seems like the film guys do absolutely love him. I know, dude, I think I think Ray GQ might have him like as like a top five receiver in this class. Um, I, I I don't know really how he's getting there to be honest, because I you, we talk about learning from mistakes. I'm getting I've been all over these vertical slots for years, you know, Dotson and Moore and Downs and all these guys, and like not that those guys are bad players i think they're all still pretty good players but their fantasy appeal is starting to look bleaker and bleaker by the year um because even josh downs who i would consider a hit like i think he's a hit as an nfl receiver i think the colts are quite happy that they drafted him like his his ceiling for for fantasy is not that high and it's partially due to the offense that he plays in the quarterback and that kind of thing but i think like his dynasty value is never going to exceed like wide receiver 30 35 ever that's fair I'm curious, you just find like Jalen McMillan is just a little bit more nuanced in like the intermediate areas, I guess. His ADOT's lower, so I could see that. 
He's not, you're not going to find a lot of numbers that tell you Jalen McMillan's a great player. Unfortunately, it's that that's, you know, that's where he lost points for me, but I was a huge fan when he was on the field in 2022, when he was fully healthy, he really, he was competing for targets stat for stat with Odunze basically. And then this year, any games that he was healthy, didn't leave early in, he dusted Polk and target share. And he was only like one and a half percent by, uh, behind, um, Odunze as well. And like, I, I think part of the reason we were talking about Odunze earlier, part of the reason I think Odunze is that good and his film is that good. And we're not overthinking the, the late declare stuff is because I think that there's three of the top 12 receivers in this class that played for that school and Odunze yeah. alpha them hard and they're good players. They're not bad players at all. I was gonna say too. shout out to Jalen McMillan. The reason why, um, cause I, 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 maybe I was talking to Danny about it on a stream or something, but I did early on like push back ever so slightly of like, are we sure that like McMillan is like for sure better than Polk? Like they seem kind of even to me just from like the number standpoint. Um, and also with McMillan, this is just like a personal thing, but his anytime touchdown in, during the college football playoffs was like free money. I bet him both times he scored uh, against Texas and Michigan. And that kind of sticks out of my head when I think Polk might've been hurt during the, <clears throat> the stretch run, but um, he was like a focal point in the run that they made is kind of what I'm trying to say, uh, tw- like down the stretch of the season. Nine for 131 versus Oregon in the Pac-12 championship game. Touchdown versus Texas. Touchdown versus Michigan. Yeah, no, he's... He, he's a, I honestly just think he's a rock-solid projection. It's weird because I have this weird dynamic in my Tier 3 of wide receivers where, in my opinion, the two most likely receivers to bust in this class are... Uh, or sorry, the three most likely receivers to bust in this class are all in the same tier. Xavier Leggett, Adonai Mitchell and Keon Coleman. I think those guys are the three most likely receivers to bust in this class. I think one of them will end up being great. One of them pretty solid. And then one of them will be an outright bust. And then in the same tier, I think Polk and McMillan are like two of the safest receivers in this class. So it's it, at that point, it's kind of like pick your flavor. What do you want? I think when you're getting these guys mid second round, early second round, it's okay to swing for the fences. Um, I'm actually going to go in a direction. Where do I want to go? I'm going to go with a little sleeper of mine here. A guy that pops in the numbers for me tested pretty well. I'll go uh, Kamani Vidal from uh, Troy uh, oh, tested yeah. pretty well. He's compact like five, eight two fifteen or whatever. Had a good senior bowl by the sounds of it. Looked like he belonged at the combine too. probably a day three back. I would imagine he's going to get drafted like fifth, sixth round or something, but um, he'd be like an interesting, I'm trying to think of like a projection for like a small school day three guy that ends up hitting, but like kind of like an Algier cool, Herbert. kind of, uh, uh, projection yeah. or an Elijah Mitchell type. I'm gonna keep taking Theo Johnson if you're gonna let him. If you guys will let me get him in the fourth, I don't know. Am I have I overreacted to Theo Johnson? Regardless, um, I did want to ask you about Ad Mitchell because not not that um you're biased, but you li- like I, I think you having Xavier Worthy over Ad Mitchell as a Texas fan. I think that that's not consensus. It seems like most people have Ad Mitchell over Xavier Worthy. So I'm sort of curious. Um, I'm curious kind of how their play styles differ. Like when you're when you're watching them. Yeah, so A.D. Mitchell, to give people an idea, my comp for him is George Pickens. And I think it's one of my favorite comps in the entire class because both guys, George Pickens and A.D. Mitchell, have elite hands, very good body control, very good strength at the catch point. Both of them are good at beating press coverage. They're both obviously really good athletes. Even Mitchell is a better athlete than I even thought. Um, Their downfield ability is kind of what makes them great. But both guys kind of frustrate you with how much better they could be if they were more consistent. And both guys are kind of raw route runners and Pickens, especially coming out of Georgia, he's gotten a lot better. And that's kind of where the Pittsburgh Steelers factor comes in. But neither of these guys were target hogs in college. I don't think either of them are target hog projections in the NFL and their mental lapses and their inconsistencies make me think that they're either going to be frustrating fantasy assets at best case scenario or worst case scenario, they're going to wash out of the league pretty quickly. And that's how I felt about Pickens. And I was wrong on Pickens, I will say. Like, I was, you know, a little lower on him than I should have been. But Mitchell has a very, very similar profile. And as a Texas fan, I can tell you it's very clear who the number one of this offense is. When you watch how the offense is structured, how how it's designed, Worthy's the dude. It's very clear to me that Worthy's the dude. His usage was weird this year because Mitchell was there. They used him more as like a screen design touches guy, which is not what Worthy does best. 
But when you watch both of these guys run short routes, intermediate routes, deep routes, Worthy does it at a far better level than A.D. Mitchell, even though Mitchell is going to be much better at the catch point because he's bigger. He's not 165, 170 pounds like Worthy, but Worthy is open like 90% of the time. So I don't really, I'm not really that concerned with the size as much as other people seem to be. No, I think that that all makes sense. I just sent you uh, the link. I'm going to get Danny in here. Is it going to screw things up? What's up, Danny? How are we? I, How are we? Not too bad. I'm not going to lie. I saw your message, and then I realized it said 6.30 and not 7.30, so apologies there. Um, no, that's all good. I'm here, though. I'm ready. Let's roll. No, you're here. <laughs> and then, better late than never. Uh, How'd the first draft go, boys? We've done two uh, already, actually. My bad, my bad. Fair enough. How did the first two go? <laughs> <laughs> The first uh, one was on. off the wall, crazy. To be honest, <laughs> yeah. The, but... the first one was was uh, pretty not nuts. not a great uh, representation of kind of what a real draft would look like, but uh, we've cleaned it up since. Is what I'll say. <laughs> Still a snake draft, by the way, Ron. Oh, we're doing a nice little snake, eh? Yeah, this is my, I'm all over the place, fellas. Right now, I, I'm in I'm I'm in the lab right now, trying to get our <laughs> screen together. But just everybody, <laughs> everybody, bear with me, real quick. Um, yeah. linear. All right. Everybody, all right. I'm gonna actually get the link in the chat. Again? No, you're good. Okay, we're good. Put that in the chat. Let's see. Let's see. Let's go. I, the boys are dude, cooking. My, I got. I gotta get. I, I gotta get my stream yard together one of these days, dude. It's just. It's all over the place. It's a freaking mess. <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even know what the graphic is behind us. I, it's, it's a. Ba a it's, it's the Godfather basement graphic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Let's go. I, think this is I think that was your best case the vertical there actually this one's not bad because you can still see yeah. all their names this might be yeah i think uh, i think we're gonna go with this one right here not a big fan of yeah. the little vert yeah what do you this what do you want about case ontario here <laughs> i'm chilling we got we got birthday boy flood in here where do you go hell yeah let's go all right put the link in the chat all right we need two more worst case ontario but yeah, I was surprised Col uh, Brett Coleman had a CD Lamb comp for uh, A.D. Mitchell. And I, and I sort of agreed with you, Bush, or I saw a lot more of George Pickens. Um, the only thing that I'll say that I find funny is uh, I trust you that Xavier was like the focal point of the offense. But holy shit, I think it's like the final drive versus Washington. It was just like three straight 50-50 balls to A.D. Mitchell with like the entire yeah. season on the line. <laughs> yeah, that's what makes me want Sarkeesian to fucking die sometimes, honestly. Like, I, dude... I don't get me started on that final drive of that game because like not once did we trust AD Mitchell in crucial situations, but because he made like a late jump contested catch earlier in the game, we're going to trust him in that spot. I don't know. To me, it just didn't make any sense. And the lamb comp for what it's, I worth, understand it. And if I will you cut up the highlights. You can get there. Like, I don't think it's an outrageous comp, he, but when you cut up his low lights, he looks like Terrace Marshall. He, yeah. And I'm, I'll add to that real quick. When he says CD lamb, I understand the pushback Ooh. is, well, they're completely different spectrums uh, as, as a player after the catch. I understand that. But when I'm looking at that, I don't think he's making the C.D. Lamb comp one-to-one. -one. I'm thinking he's saying it. He has C.D. Lamb elements to his game. If you watch A.D. Mitchell play, he carries – I don't know how, how to explain. He carries that same type of aura, that same type of like stylistic swag that C.D. has. And you see it in flashes, like Corey said, in his route running, the little hop step that he navigates in, big wide receiver moving like that. I can see where somebody would get to there stylistically. Now, all around game, not so much because, like you said, AD Mitchell's not going to be breaking tackles, and CD Lamb may just be the best yards after catch receiver outside of maybe Malik Neighbors that I've seen in, in a while. So, um, yeah, I understand it. By the way, my 102 what, slash 103 is on the board here. A lot of people are going to be going with Jaden Daniels. So I'm going to see him get pushed up the board in a lot of drafts, but. Drake may still the chosen one. Huh. 80 Drake may, I will say, wow. fellas, I will say, this is my this is my nerd take, and I want you guys can laugh me out of the building sure. here. I think Drake May is still my QB two. Let's go. But I I'm a little bit bummed with how small his hands were. I know that that's, that's a thing. I know that that's a crazy thing to say. But I was expecting, I you know, the ten inch, the, the ten inch really Josh careless. Allen. I wanted the big mitts. I know it doesn't matter a ton, but um, we're talking about kind of like, I don't know, because you're, you know, 6'5", 225 pounds. You're hoping for like big ass hands. Um, yeah, it's I mean, not like a huge yeah. knock on him, but I, I would have liked better. And I think the Vikings you measured are Falcons in like nine and a quarter. Up for him. 
I was Falcons, joking with Falcons somebody. or Vikings trade up for him. He's going to play in a dome anyway. It's not going to matter. I was joking with some buddies about how I have bigger hands than like half the quarterbacks in this class, and I'm five nine, and they're all six four. <laughs> Penny's got mitts though, bro. He he's the one that's got some mitts. mitts. I was pretty impressed by ten point five. No, nothing was funnier than seeing Olu Fashan, who have eight and a half inch hands at six foot six, three hundred <laughs> plus pounds. <laughs> that's eight and a half that's under the shoulder pads, baby. Dude, I, I replied, you know, like the meme of like uh, the, the, the fake person with the fake hands, like typing on the computer. I ended yeah, up replying yeah. with that. Come on. <laughs> Ron's got the guys, sound effects. <laughs> guys, literally a T-Rex, bro, at eight and a half inch hands, bro. That's, yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. The fact that Rugs, by the way, had 11 inch hands is the yeah. freakish, freakiest thing I've ever heard. Like, dude, the guy was like 5'11", like 190 pounds with like 11 inch mitts for some reason. Like. He built like Chris Carter or Jarvis Landry for no reason at all. Danny, we were talking earlier. I'm kind of curious what your Fair. thoughts on this are, but it, it seems to me like a lot of like the analytics movement and like uh, I'm obviously, you know, at the forefront, if you will, <laughs> um, of that movement. But I think a lot of the modeling stuff that I've done in the past has been kind of to spot the next, you know, like Kevin White and these like catastrophic blunders in the top 10. Yep. I kind of think that we're past that. Like, I, I don't know that anyone drafting the top 10 is going to be like this, like, holy hell. Like, how, you know, like, what we've seen, like, Tavon Austin and Darius Hayward Bays. Like, I, I just don't know that we're going to see, like, that big. Like, obviously, people, are, players aren't going to hit, but it, it would shock me if it's just like, man, like, how the hell did that guy end up in the top 10? So, like, in terms of, like, Roma Dunze, it doesn't look like the prettiest in terms of the numbers, but I'm kind of just trusting it where, like, my model right now has Brian Thomas Jr. over him, but. I, I, I'm kind of just overriding it and saying, well, Odunze, you know, the, the film guys love him. He looks good. Uh, you have the context of the Washington offense as well. Uh, yeah. So I'm fine. I, I think in the past I would have been like, nah, nah, like Brian Thomas Jr. He's over him. Like Roma Dunze, you know, late breakout. But um, I think you kind of do have to just step aside when it gets to like this draft capital range. No, and I agree. And I think part of that that plays into it is back in, you know, 2012, 2013, 2014, around that area. I mean, Kevin White was 2015 draft, I believe, with Murray Cooper. So yeah, around that area. 13 and yeah. you know, those guys. I think teams John are Ross, just not as stupid as they used to be, to be honest. Like, I think they're using analytics different a little bit more, too. Yeah, more access to analytics is obviously a big part of it. I mean, you see it just in the decision-making uh, factors in the NFL, like just a game-to-game -game basis, seeing like that they prioritize what the numbers saying. Understanding that now when it comes to scouting, understanding what actually matters for a wide receiver, uh, just running out and, and having a 4-2 is not going to make or break Xavier Worthy's value. It's more so going to be what you saw of the player on the film. Um, there's just more factors at hand and better priority in those factors, I would say, for, for amongst the decision makers now. So that's smart. Um, I am back on the clock here. You go with Trey Benson. Rip my heart out. I'm just going to go John. <laughs> I'm not going to overthink it. Yeah, I'm a, I will say, though, I, I do think it, it's funny because analytics obviously led me to Quentin Johnson last year. But I think you're going to I think that there's always going to be your Quentin Johnson's, your Brashad Perriman's, your like Laquan Until Treadwell's. Harry, these guys are like sneaking. These, yeah. Nikhil Harry guys who like sneak into the first round that it's like, yeah, I mean, he's not, he's not going to work out. So I think that that's kind of where, you, where if you're going to sort of like split hairs and be like, yeah, I'm going to take a stand against the market on this, then go there. But the idea that like, we're going to see guys ever get drafted in the top 10, that just like blatantly, or just like, what the hell are they doing there? I think that's probably done. So like a lot of, a lot of my analytics brethren are pushing back against Roma Dunze. Uh, I, I, I see it. I, I understand what you're going through. Um, but you kind of just have to submit to Kratos and the uh, the <laughs> kingdom of Rome. <laughs> to a certain degree. To a certain degree. Now, like, wait, 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 when his, the whole family comes after you because you say he's wide receiver three and one of the best wide receiver classes I've ever seen. Uh, <laughs> and then they're like, no, I'm he's going to start tweeting Harrison. that Romo Dunze is a better prospect than Garrett Wilson before I say anything else about him. <laughs> yeah. like, like, it's a pretty, pretty big compliment. Dude, it's like, you, okay. You call him wide receiver three in this class. Kratos comes to your replies and be like, what are you talking about, wide receiver three? Who is Marvin Harrison Jr.? <laughs> like, you know, and then he cites Lane Stein, who has Malik Neighbors as wide receiver one. <laughs> Just like, know, right? oh, well, look at this box. <laughs> or like how Mel Ky or was it Mel Kiper or Daniel Jeremiah? One of them had him third on their on their board after Marv. Like Marv was two, he was three. It'd be like, I, I think I'll trust the big dogs on this one or something. <laughs> it's like okay. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you could you could craft an argument for whatever you want to craft. Um, yeah. I'm I'm actually a little annoyed. I maybe I'm not annoyed. I hope Braylon Allen never tests so he can be a landmine that I avoid in rookie drafts. Facts. Um, 
fellas, if his speed score ends up being good, he's going to be a guy I draft. I'm sorry. Oh, I, I understand. Go ahead. I, he won't I, be a guy I, I draft. If he runs in go the ahead. four fives at 235 pounds, he's going to be a third round rookie pick that I'm going to be taking. He's going to run in the four sixes if he had ran at the combine for starters. Yeah. But what? He's like 16 also, and a half. Also, I might start a Twitter account that's did Braylon Allen break a tackle and just tweet no every day. Man. <laughs> it's tough, man, because he he's a he's a numbers guy where I just see I'm like 235 totally pounds. Guy. He's young as hell. And if he runs fast. Um, so I, he's curious. a numbers guy on the surface because he's young as hell and he like, you know, that kind of stuff. But when you go to his like advanced numbers, like his, you know, rush yards over expected and his like rushing grades and like his you know broken tackles and that kind of stuff he's totally not a numbers guy from that perspective that's fair um, that's fair but in terms of in terms of like the market share stuff and early you know commanding a part of that wisconsin offense early he hits it i, I it's he's tough just been fellas. objectively worse since the first year that's the problem it's, too. it's tough fellas the the numbers like the numbers like braille and allen <laughs> the numbers also like someone you guys hate will shipley if will shipley tests well at his pro day i'll be interested um, I mean, it's also I don't hate Will Shipley. I just day. think he's not. I, I think he's destined to probably be a committee back, and and that could play if he's in a good offense or whatever. But I just I, I don't think he has upside to be like you know a three down workhorse or even like so, you know to the level of Jameer Gibbs or A Chan or whatever. Like he he's not going to even get that kind of workload. I I don't personally believe that, but player. you know you never know. So Ron, I gotta I gotta ask you about this. So I have a, a certain comp for Will Shipley. Give you a hint. He's come out within the last what three years, I believe, Corey. Uh, you know, I actually comp, don't right? know who your comp is. I'd have to look oh, at it. So. Right, right, right. Okay, he's come out within, I believe, the last three years. Let me just take a look. Devontae Walker's going to go second. Yeah, round, he so came I out in. Uh, it was 2021, Danny, that he came out. Came out in 2021. Um, same type of appeal, you know, like he got hyped up from a little bit. Uh, ends up going in the in day three of the NFL draft. Ends up playing the space back role that I have envisioned for Will Shipley. The Kenneth Gamewell? Exactly right on. Exactly <laughs> to be right honest, on. I think that he's a better comp for Bucky Irving than he is for Will Shipley. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm going to have to adjust Bucky, Bucky a little Irving bit. I had, him run. running, I had him running more mid 4-4 slash low 4-4. I thought he was going to run in the 4-3s, dude. Well, I, I thought, thought it was going to be at least low 4-4, basically is what I'm saying. Like floor I'd wise. fire my agent tomorrow Probably. if I was Bucky Irving. By the way. Good football player. Let's let's do it. Jalen McMillan over let's Polk, go. huh? Just take him. Yeah, I ended, up, I ended up grading it's him It's an out. FSE stance we're doing here. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I you got me the, with the vision of JSN. I couldn't unsee it when I was watching him. I'm not going to lie. He does I look like unsee him. him. He does yeah. look like him. Yeah, there's... I, there's, there's um, Tez Walker. I don't like Tez Walker, but I think he's going to get drafted highly, so I just took him. Yeah, Some I, I actually love him. I, I think the NFL is probably cooled down on him a little bit. I think he's going to be more like I, this is a lazy helmet scouting comparison. <laughs> um, but I think he's going to be kind of like Deami Brown esque in terms of like where he fits in as a prospect. That's his skill set. It's you know kind of I, he's not he ran faster than Deami Brown and he's a little bit bigger and thicker than Deami Brown. But they also kind of both came in a little bit less than what they were listed at as well. Uh, Deami Brown I think was listed like six three, like two hundred and ten pounds or something. Came in like same exact. 61190 or whatever that Tez Walker came in or 62190. So um I guess I'm just gonna keep taking Polk if you guys are gonna keep letting me actually you know what I'll mix it up. I'm gonna go with Estime. I still believe I in Estime. It. Um Same. that's what I was gonna ask you guys. He never it. had great elite speed, but his 10 yard split is very good. And yeah. I know you know we can debate 10 yard splits. I don't know if it actually has any merit to it. Just like when you watch the guy on film, you like this guy's going to create a lot of 10 to 15 yard runs. He's just literally never going to break off a 70 yard touchdown. Yeah. Well, like obviously if he ran like four, six with this 10 yard, he had like, I, I would be more than comfortable, but like the problem is four seventy two. He, maybe he doesn't get this day two capital. Like from a pure film standpoint, going into the combine, he was my RB three. He dropped four because obviously a guy like Jalen Wright obviously checked all the boxes. I had to ding estimate a little bit and their grades were so close to the point where Wright slightly overtook him. But, like Audrey guys probably should have known really that Wright was going to destroy the combo. Oh, no, no, no. I, I, I didn't adjust Wright's score. I adjusted estimate down a little bit because I thought he would do better than he did. I thought, right. I thought, okay, maybe worst case scenario, you're looking at like a four, six, three. Like I thought he would run similar. Like David Montgomery ran four, five, Dave eight. Montgomery ran four, six, three. Yeah. No, he ran four, five, eight, I believe. 
Mahomes. No, he ran four six three. Unless RAS, um, you know, adjusted it because it was at his pro day or whatever. But RAS has it listed as a pro day thing. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, because I was I was uh, looking at it because obviously I mean dimensions wise five eleven you know about uh, you know two twenty five or so uh, type of style of runner like if he had a David Montgomery type of career he gets selected on day two I mean for a third round rookie pick at this point you're pretty happy yeah no I mean multi time RB one out of a, a round three rookie pick I'll take like oh, yeah. David Montgomery would be the absolute nuts for him obviously but obviously yeah I, I think Estime is a good player man like he has yes he, he has the rushing instincts that you look for and that's such a subjective thing to actually scout but when you're you know 511 221 and you actually play every bit to that size which is something that Braylon Allen does not do at an even larger size I, I just I have to respect it. I watch a guy who breaks tackles consistently, who had, you know, a 94.0 PFF rushing grade this year, who's able to make people miss, who has good burst, like I said, 10 yard split time good, but doesn't have great long speed and can contribute a little bit as a receiver like Montgomery can. Not special. He's not gonna contribute a huge receiving workload, but he can do something here and there. Yep. Yeah, estimate's fun. He like I I've seen on just like Twitter cut ups, but he he would break away a lot more runs than you'd think. Four yeah. four seven two guy. I mean, it's the ACC. I thought he, gonna, I thought he had a chance to run in the mid four five. So with a good time, I was like, I think yeah. he actually has like maybe four five speed. It's just that he dot like after that ten, he just dies off. Like he just doesn't have. Uh, he can't carry the speed very long. Which um, I mean, was it the? It was the NC State game, I believe, where uh, he had like a seventy yard run there. And I mean, you're out running legit linebackers. Like Peyton Wilson was on the field. Peyton Wilson ended up testing as a freak as well, like a four four three linebacker at his size so like i saw him break away against nc state and nc state caused a lot of teams problems defensively like if you watch audric estimate against nc state man like obviously aside from that big run like he was really giving it to peyton wilson throughout that game and i mean peyton wilson may end up being a late first early second round pick as the first linebacker off the board yeah no he he had a great he played really well against ohio state too which was uh oh yeah another good one of his like I don't know. Estime, uh, he's going to be, I'm actually a little, I'm actually kind of glad that he tested so poorly because I think it's going to knock him to round three of rookie drafts and I'm just going to snag him up wherever I can get him at that point in time. I'm trying to think of like a day three David Montgomery type comp where you're talking Damian about Damian like Pierce that. is also one that yeah, I debated Pierce, making yeah. the comp as as well. Um, I think he runs Algier, Damian Pierce. Those guys both ran like, I think Pierce actually centers. ran in the mid four fives or whatever, but Algier ran in the four sixes as well. So, I mean, they don't have great breakaway speed, but they actually like break away more runs than you'd think they would because they, you know, like Audric Estime ran a 50 yard touchdown, an 80 yard touchdown, 41 yard run. The 81 yards, was against NC State, like, right? I'm looking at his longs in his games, and like he has a long of 20 plus yards in like literally every single game this year. The 80 yard was more was the explosive NC State than Najee right? Harris. Yeah. Yeah, it, sure. it, the NC State game was an 80-yard touchdown. That yes. was the longest run of his of his uh, season this year. But he also like, he had a 50-yard run against uh, against Tennessee State and a 41-yard run against Central Michigan, a 35-yard run against Ohio State. Like he he had big runs this year. Like he he doesn't just you know break tackles and that kind of thing. Do I go with Brendan Rice here? I nearly <laughs> fell asleep watching his film today. Um, really? He's not he's not that exciting, man. Like he's just he he's big he's an like he's not average size he's a bigger wide receiver he just doesn't like do anything spectacular which makes me like think he's just going to be a guy in the nfl like a wide receiver four for a team or whatever i just don't think he has like a whole lot of upside uh i'm gonna roll with the i'm gonna go with loud just because we were talking shit about shipley i haven't graded him yet um but i think when we're talking about pass catching specialists i actually kind of like his projection a little bit more because i think he's gonna be a raw pure jd mckissick Theo Riddick uh, type of guy. And I think he could have like, especially in dynasty best ball leagues, um, some decent appeal for that. Yeah. And uh, real quick, by the way, I'll, I'll just talk about Baker a little bit. Have you uh, checked out uh, Baker at all, uh, Ron? Like, like how's he, how's he show up in the numbers? Um, I, I haven't checked out. Like he, he's okay. Uh, he's kind of like, I don't know. He's in this range with kind of some of the, it, it kind of depends where he gets drafted right now. I have him at Not day you. three. Uh, if he goes yeah. day two, then I, I could see him getting right in the tier with like Jermaine Burton, uh, you know, Pearsall, these kind of guys. Okay. He's interesting. Uh, he he kind of looks like a traditional X sort of receiver, but yeah, yeah, nothing that like stands out too, too much with him. I'll throw you a film comp that I saw when I watched him and it, it hits close to home because this guy just plays for my favorite team. Pre-ACL Michael Gallup. Yeah, pre ACL tear, Michael Gallup. That's what I see when I watched Javon Baker. Like you mentioned, number two X wide receiver probably doesn't have the highest ceiling, but 
high ADOT type of guy. You know, he's probably not going to be 130, 140 targets, but I mean, Michael Gallup was a 105 target player, 110 target player, and he had that big time second year where he was a wide receiver too in fantasy. So four three here, I, I think he probably goes closer to day two, but uh, obviously that is the risk level taking him at this point. And you're not the only one I've seen. Uh, I know Theo Ash. Uh, if you guys like see his stuff, Snoop I know knows. that he's talked about him on TikTok. Um, and then also, who else did I see that liked him? Oh yeah, Hayden Wings did like a write up on like all of his rookie receivers, yeah. and he had uh, Javon Baker pretty high. So yeah, it seems like guys like him. It seems like he is one of these. I don't know. The like UCF does kind of churn out uh, these like X wide receivers. Um, not that they're like amazing or anything, but you get what I'm saying. Like NFL guys. Yeah. Snoog knows. Snoog knows. Yeah, Snoog's Frank literally Smith. in the chat going, Javon Baker, what a steal. He's a huge – like, I'm not going to lie, Baker, Snoog. Man. I think Javon Baker's like a top 15-ish wide receiver in this class. It's funny. We were just talking about Deami Brown. That was actually my comp for Javon Baker when I watched him. I'm a little worried that he's not the most fluid athletically, like, you know, lateral movement-wise. I think he's kind of – stuck. I feel like I've said this for 60 wide receivers in this class. There's so many guys that are stuck on this, like, vertical route tree – that I think it's not a conducive fantasy asset unless they landed like a really good offense. So for me, I'm a little bit, I'm a little shaky on like Javon Baker types and Tez Walker types. Like, cause to be honest, I think that their roles are not the types that translate well for fantasy. That's fair. Uh, do you guys want to run up? Uh, I know Bush has, <laughs> Bush has been here for a while. So, uh, I you guys can want to take run up one more whenever I, what you I'll, whenever. I'm going to, I'm going to tag out if Danny and you want to just, uh, you yeah. know, hammer this thing home. I'm starving. So I'm going to make some food and the Bruins are wiping the floor with my leash right now. So I kind of watch that game. Hey, you um, know, what's on my birthday though. Eh? What? Saturday. Abs leaps. Abs leaps. Oh yeah, sure. I mean, we'll <laughs> nah. probably, we'll probably lose a two, one game. Like we always do to the Habs, <laughs> even though the Habs stink. <laughs> Facts. Bad. But anyways, yeah, I'll probably hop off here and make some food. So uh, I'll let you uh, let you um, I'll pass the baton to you here at the end. We're going to be mm -hmm. uh, if anybody from our audience is listening to this right now, um, we will be doing the uh, 105 to 108 rookie draft strategy video. We did 101 to 104 uh, the other day. So we're going to be doing that 105 to 108 one uh, tomorrow. And then I'll, I'll break down some cells. Then we'll do 109 to 112. And then we're going to have some dynasty decision stuff uh, for the rest of the week. If anybody was curious. But yeah, um, I'll uh, I'll head off of here and I'll talk to you guys later. Take care, brother. Right, see appreciate you. you for good talking ball you with for, you, Bush. Yes, appreciate sir. Appreciate you for taking the torch before me, you know? Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, I'm trolling. How you doing, though, Ron? I'm doing good. Someone I, I wanted to pick your uh, your brain on a little bit because I was uh, asking Bush earlier uh, as I'm, like, kind of messing around with our pictures here. Um, how, where are we at on Brian Thomas Jr.? Because in, in the past, man, if this was, you know, if this was a young, ripe 2020 Ron Stewart, I'd hop on here and I'd be like, Roma Dunze is cool, but I think I'm going to put Brian Thomas Jr. <laughs> over him. Um, he's someone where, of course, it let, uh, testing doesn't matter as much for wide receivers. Like, it doesn't really matter a ton. It's like a very small input for me. But if you have a, yeah. a, a, a certain base grade in my model, then RES will, like, multiply you up. Like, that's something that, like, it does with, like, Odell Beckham and these guys that have a good base grade. They test really well. Boom. They get bumped up. He gets bumped up to elite after the combine yesterday. Where are we at on him? Because I, I think I, I am going to have him behind Rome, but I, you could talk me into having him like 1A, 1B with Rome, like almost in the same tier. I don't think Brian Thomas Jr. is going to get that top 10 draft capital, but it wouldn't shock me if he went like top 15. Um, I think that the only thing is like his role isn't as conducive to fantasy points, where he seems more of like a, a, a field stretcher than like a, a target hog. So I'm curious uh, how you're looking at Brian Thomas. Yeah, I would say maybe in early development, he could be, uh, you know, the ancillary piece to an offense, the number two to an offense. But I do think the number one appeal obviously uh, appeals long term. You met, you hit it right on the head when it comes to evaluating players, when it comes to the combine, kind of adjusting their grade. It's more so based off buckets and it's more so looking at what exactly are our cutoffs here, right? If he was already a first round prospect to begin with, which I thought Brian Thomas was, again, going into the combine, he was already my wide receiver four. For the record, Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, Roma Dunze were my top three. Brian Thomas was my number four. But Brian Thomas was more so in the tier with, you know, him, Vlad McConkie. Um, I had a guy like Troy Franklin in that tier, uh, A.D. Mitchell. Like, those guys were kind of really close, in my opinion. Uh, Brian Thomas was the head of that group with an 84-5 grade. Uh, so, for the record, the way it works in our grading, 95-plus uh, would be generational. Marvin ended up getting a 96 
92, 95 is top 10 worthy. That would be Malik Neighbors at 91. Romo Dunze was really close to top 10 worthy. He ended up grading as a top 25. He ended up at an 89, whereas the cutoff obviously would be at 90. So 89 versus 91, he's close to Malik Neighbors. Then wide receiver four was to him in my grading. Um, and like you mentioned now, I mean, you got the combine. You got a better uh, look at him potentially being a top 15, top 20 overall draft pick. I still would go Roma Dunze because, again, I think he's a top 10 lock, and I think he's such a such an easy, seamless transition to the next level. But, I mean, if you're talking about pure upside, let's just say he lands number 17 overall to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Year one, you got oh, Ingram yeah. there. You got Kirk there. You can kind of use him as that ancillary wide receiver. Basically, I mean, have him do what the, what the hell Bri- uh, Calvin Ridley was doing last year where most of the time, you know, he was just you know, chilling, and then every now and then he had those blow-up games. I'd be comfortable seeing that out of Brian Thomas in year one. Year two, yeah. year three comes around. You got that 24-year-old quarterback. He's had the two for the long term. Obviously, that big-time skill set down the field. It's a lot of uh, – it's very exciting. And like you mentioned, 108, 109, I'm cool with that. Yeah, that's where I'm at too. I don't think Bush is quite there. But, like, I, I think you're probably in a similar spot where I almost have him – like, you know, the top three, then you go top ten, they're all great. I would almost have him in a tier of his own. You could maybe sneak in A.D. Mitchell if you wanted to. But, like, to, like he's very firmly my wide receiver four. Like, I, I don't know that I'll, I'll move off of that regardless of what happens. Yeah, he's for sure my wide receiver four. I will say, though, I mean, the top 12 wide receivers this year have legit top 50 overall grades. By the way, I, I am a professional yapper. It comes in the <laughs> Italian genes. My apologies there, Thomas. That's my boy from my hometown. He's just trolling. I know, he, was I know, in I know. The, uh, he was in the draft party video with us. Hey, that's what's up. Did he win the league? No, but he had the fastest combine time when we did the uh, the beach little obstacle course. It seems like he's, yeah, he's yapping since he didn't win the league. Yeah, dude. dude Tom, Tom's my oh, boy, God. but I haven't seen him in a championship in a minute, man. Oh shit! I got one one. Let's go, baby. Uh, super super flex rookie. Uh, point point five ten in premium. Caleb Williams, baby. Are you sure you want to go, Caleb? But he's scared to compete against his peers. <laughs> Bro, that question had me rolling. Who asked that? Actually, <laughs> it's brutal, man. They were they were cooking every fan. Of Theo Ash, freaking all the all the uh, PFF sucks. Fucking Matthias, the fucking football yeah. tweeter, whatever My the boys. hell. All of the tone setters were killing us, man. <laughs> Bro, killing us. bro, you have to, you can't tell me that that doesn't sound like something the tone setters would ask. Like, no, just literally. Going up, are you scared to compete? Literally, like straight up asking <laughs> a prospect that. He, he really, he should have just been like, not like that was satire, everybody. Like, uh, I'm just <laughs> trolling. Like, I think it would have been better received, but man, he, he doubled down on it. it. He ended up deleting it, but like, man, he was yes. under siege, dude. <laughs> That's not a good look. If if it came off and he was joking and like he, like Caleb saw that like and it was like a joking interaction, I I don't mind posting at that point because Caleb would be like, Wait, "What do you mean?" Like, of course I love competing yeah. and stuff like that. But uh, the way he just approached it was so weird. You you can't be Dustin from Dynasty Nerds with glasses on asking Caleb Williams that you know if if Are you were you like a more personable person like just messing, but. God <laughs> damn it, dude! He said they he set us back years. He set us back years, bro. And then and then later on, Caleb mocked him because he was he was talking to Brendan Rice and he asked him. He's like, "Do you view yourself as a wide receiver one, like a a, a a separate contributing wide receiver? Like, what's your projection in fantasy moving forward?" <laughs> oh Man. my god, dude. Brendan Rice is interesting. Bush was saying that he was looking at him earlier today. He's not really. I, I mean, when I say interesting, I mean his last name, and that's kind of it. <laughs> Um, yeah. you like him Jayden at all? Went one Rice? I could who? Oh, dude, the <laughs> these drafts we've been running today, we ran like five of them and they've been all over the place. I just um, saw straws said that in the comments, right? The point yeah. that we, okay, you can continue, my bad. Well, I, I'm curious too. I, I didn't pick your brain. The whole LSU offense is, is uh, super interesting to me because it just like, yeah, it's just like deep bombs to Brian Thomas Jr., explosive plays, Malik Neighbors, like running the ball, and then like nothing really else yeah um you seem i think what you were saying that uh daniel's almost closer to like the uh nicks mccarthy range than he is to make caleb i'm kind of curious where you're at on daniel's like kind of what do you see because he scares me a little bit where it's like man i like you know as as one of the guys that like really loved anthony richardson last year i get it like I, i'm in love with the konami code qbs i i, I 100 love the archetype but like god damn man like i don't know that uh 
I don't know. I can push it. Like I, I know some guys that have him at like 102, uh, like over Marvin Harrison Jr. Even, which is yeah. like I don't know, man. So I'm curious, kind of how how you see it, how you're treating it. Um, and by the way, I'm going to go before your pick is up here. I know you're going. Uh, give me worthy. I yeah, was good. I yeah, give me worthy. He's fast as hell. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I do it. Uh, all jokes aside, though. Um, so on Jaden Daniels, real quick. That's more so from a, a real life standpoint. Obviously, in fantasy, he's going to get propped up close to the other two guys because, I mean, the, the guy's a one of one rusher in this class, a top five rusher already in the NFL. So I have to, you know, adjust that from a fantasy perspective. But from a real life perspective. Somebody who struggles to throw across the middle of the field really scared me on film when I was watching Jaden Daniels. On top of that, he wasn't really getting through his progressions. He was just tucking and running it, which I'm cool, man. You you got the athletic ability. Go make a play. But I do want to see you be able to get through your progressions, be able to see that uh, backside dig open up. Like He just wasn't getting to that area of his progressions. As soon as he was rushed, he was tucking, he was running it. I mean, in the Alabama game alone, he was just creating yards after yards, so I don't blame him for rushing it, but... I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I feel like uh, by 24 years old, having these type of deficiencies as a passer really does scare me. By the way, Trey Benson's a lock here. Uh, really does scare me. And at this point, if it has a Justin Fields level turnout, I wouldn't be shocked again. I thought Justin Fields was by far a better prospect. On I was just about to ask you that question because I was going to say it on Twitter and I think I was going to get roasted for it if I was like, Justin by Fields far. is hands down a much better prospect than Jaden Daniels. Not close. Just from any perspective people are gonna be like oh well he felt the 12 he sucks now from a pros- prospect standpoint fields is a much cleaner prospect from like especially when we're talking just like konami like rushing quarterbacks like fields is the better prospect and he almost seems like a, a, a similar projection to Jalen daniels where i could see him you know being a really good fantasy quarterback but then you start to question the you know is he going to be Long starting term. in the nfl in week one of his year three you know on his rookie deal that's like a, a, a reasonable concern you know I think it's a reasonable concern, and I mean, it's kind of the Jalen Hurts factor. The difference is Jalen Hurts ended up turning that into the long-term deal, so you don't have any of those concerns long-term, because I know a a couple people have brought that up uh, after this year. I could care less. Like Jalen Hurts is still my quarterback three in Dynasty because he's got tethered to that long-term deal. That's what I'm looking for. If you get signed, like if Justin Fields signed a four-year extension tomorrow, my concerns about him as a passer completely go down the hill because the NFL isn't worried about him as a passer. It's more so, like you said, with Jane Daniels, if he doesn't prove it as a passer right away, are they going to have a plan by year three, by four to go somewhere else at the position? Not quite sure. Again, it's a lower risk level, but when I have a set it and forget it level stud like Drake May available and Drake May is going after him, that's where I have to push back because, I mean, Drake May is closer to Caleb Williams. I mean, we talked about this. Drake May, to me, yeah. is closer to Caleb Williams than Jane Daniels is to him. And in fact, Jane Daniels, in my opinion, from a, a film standpoint, is closer to J.J. McCarthy than he is Drake May. Like, there's levels to this, man. Yeah. It, he, man, he's like he's like 6'4", 205. Like, he's thin. Like, oh, yeah. There's just a lot of things you can poke holes in, man. Like, not not to say that he can't succeed, and I'm sure you're not saying that either, but it's like, he he's not, uh, I'd have a hard time. Like, last year, uh, you can push up Anthony Richardson to 102, and, you know, because, like, a certain way that the class sort of fell, but, I mean, yeah. God, I, I, it, it's... When you start you start putting your nuts on the table when you take them over Marv and you take them over May and you take them over neighbors and you you know you're you're not leaving yourself a lot of breathing room. I think uh, Nick Ercolano on his uh, Dynasty channel they did like a three man mock where they kind of went through their first picks or whatever and like Daniels yeah. for I think two of the three of those guys were like uh, was like their 102 or 101. It's like I I love rushing too, man. I I do. I promise. But I don't know if we can blindly chase it in a class list like this. You know that's that's the scary part to me. No, I agree. So for the record, uh, the notes that I have on Jaden Daniels, uh, overall thoughts, elite playmaker in the open field, throws with good touch on deep shots. Literally, when I was watching him, like I was charting my notes, I made a charting uh, for for a game on him, and I also wrote my notes. Uh, when he sees it, he's generally accurate. Like I have no issues with him uh, as an accurate passer. When he does see it, he's accurate with the football. But when it comes to the cons, struggles in structure at times, sloppy with his footwork and his base. Struggles to throw with anticipation causes him to throw the missing uh, two missed throwing windows, especially over the middle of the field. Has a weak arm for NFL standard, not much velocity on his passes, which I mean, that's the negative. But the positive, when you're able to rush the way you are, he gives me RG3 vibes regardless. Again, if you draft RG3 at 102 in your rookie draft, you're pretty pleased with that if he doesn't get hurt, right? So the problem that I have, though, is Drake May, I view on the Trevor Lawrence, Justin Herbert spectrum, and I could never forgive myself for passing on that type of athlete or that type of athlete, that type of prospect. Yeah, I agree. I'm curious. Bush, Bush was trying to sell me earlier on Xavier Leggett, crushes the combine. Yes. 
Um, I, I assume Big you fan. like him as well. Big fan. Big fan. Um, I'm going to go Lloyd because I feel better about him getting day two capital at this point. Yeah, that's who I was between. I was between him and uh, Leggett there. Um, yeah. I have estimate higher for the record in my, in my grading, but this is just building in the the worry that maybe he falls to day three. Whereas, I mean, we talked about it. Marshawn Lloyd, I feel very, very comfortable slotting into day two based off the, the, the buzz that we're hearing about him. Oh, 100%. Yeah, Marshawn Lloyd, Marshawn Lloyd, day two. Like, I think uh, you commented on my tweet yesterday, but I think you're yeah. right that, like, Marshawn Lloyd, after, after like, Benson Brooks, you could put him in the same tier as Wright in terms of, like, chance to get day two capital. Um, I don't really have a comp for Lloyd, though. I know some people are throwing I, out DeAndre Swift. I, I don't one. love that one. Swift is, I like, a one. better pass catcher lighter. Who do you got? Reminds me of, uh, hear me out. He's a bigger version than this guy, so let me uh, just actually see the dimensions when I watched him. Um, here, let me let me see. So Marshawn Lloyd was about five eight, uh, two hundred and twenty, I believe, or two seventeen. Was he? What do you weigh in that? I think two twenty, which is freaking compact. Two twenty five eight. I mean, that's a tone. It's crazy, dude. What he reminds me of is a bigger version because I mean. It's a big difference in weight. It's 206 pounds versus 220. But stylistically, that jitterbug, the way they move in the open field, it reminds me a lot of Devontae Freeman when he when he came uh. out of Florida State. When he came out of Florida State, smaller running back, uh, juice in the open field. A lot of the intangibles is where he needs to progress at the NFL level. But, I mean, we saw Devontae Freeman literally have an RB1 overall season in the second se- second year. Yeah, no. Marshawn Lloyd, Marshawn Lloyd is fun. I know I know some Debbie oh, yeah. guys are still holding on to him. I know he was like a five star prospect coming out or recruit coming out. I think uh Noah more parties has him Come as on. like his RB one in this class as well. Which I think like it seems like scouts are, are probably like, you know, if you were to which pull funny. 30 scouts, I think like five to ten of them probably have Lloyd at RB one. Which is funny to me because I thought the things that he struggles with most were most of the intangible stuff that scouts would break down, like in terms of vision, in terms of production profile, in terms of, uh, I mean, the, the, those are the two main ones that I had cons with. Like physically is where I thought he would strive. Like from, from a size speed perspective, from an open field perspective, like that's where his strengths are to his game. So I'm shocked that uh, like scouts are usually more anal about like that type of stuff, vision, and you know, oh, he missed yeah. this cutback, and he's watching the film. So that is that is funny that they're pointing it out, but maybe they're just uh, admiring the physical nature that he brings, right? Like 220 yeah. pounds running the way he does, and what he's like super explosive. Yeah, very, very. Does he catch passes? I haven't, I haven't looked at those numbers. Nah, not, not really. really. Not really. I mean, I, I didn't see it as a problem when I was watching him, but it, there just wasn't a ton of volume. That's fair. Yeah. I feel like they kind of rotated backs too a little bit. Is that USC there... team, the, the usage there didn't make a ton of sense to me. Like, <laughs> I, I was confused. Like, how is Zachariah Branch? Like, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm being an idiot, but it's like when I would Hear watch him, it. I'd be like, well, how come he's not getting the ball more? Hear me out, by the way. Again, I haven't done a formal study on these guys yet. They're still in my in my chopping block for, for my order at wide receiver. Uh, I, I just got through, uh, who was it today? Uh, I, I did Jalen McMillan yesterday. Um, I did Ricky Pearsall today. So I'm just getting through. I believe I have 17 Some or 18 names that I've Pearsall, graded so man. far. Yeah, he he's interesting. The, I've seen the TikTok uh, the, catch. That's all I got. <laughs> I mean, he's got good hands. He's a good route runner. Obviously, tested very well at the combine. So I can see the buzz, but I mean, the profile, I just really can't get over. And he doesn't have an evidence of a dominant season like a guy like Leggett, who we were mentioning before, uh, does. Like, uh, at least with Leggett, you know, he has a bad production profile, but I can point to the fact that when he dominated, he dominated really big. I don't really have that type of precedent when it comes to Ricky Pearsall, but. I mean, I have him graded as an early day three guy on the fringe of being a late day two. Like he graded 69, 70 would have got you as a top 100 grade. So uh, I like the player. I think he's a complimentary player, but I do think the NFL might value him more than I would, to be honest. I think he might go as a top 50 pick. No, 100%. Yeah. I've heard like Adam Thielen comps with him. Yeah, uh, which is like it, it's almost like Ricky Pearsall is like Funny. getting the actual Lad McConkey uh, white boy like uh, comps, but, you know? Yeah. Which which is funny. To be fair, four four one completely baffled me. Like I did not see that type of athleticism on film, and I mean, it gets me wanting to watch a little bit more now. Like, what did I miss? Like, does he show signs of being that four four one guy? Because I mean, when I watched him, I thought he was you know a fine athlete, like a slot athlete, but I didn't think he had that type of juice. Oh, 100 percent. Uh, when it when it I comes to Pierce off for the record, I knew Lad had that type of juice. I me and yeah. Bush were talking for a while, like, yo, this dude Lad's gonna run a four three slash four four, like on that fringe. 
And I mean, 439 official, like Trip Crown says. And you said, are, are you are you taking Lad McConkey in this range? Like, at, at what point are you Easily. like, yeah, I'm down 202? Yeah, so I'll, I mean, I'll look through my rankings right now. For the record, I've been taking Benson slash Brooks because I know uh, in rookie drafts, especially with the picks that I have in the second round, I'm going to be taking a lot of dart throws at running back regardless, especially in this class. Uh, if I get a top running back and then still get like a Jalen McMillan in the third round, I, I'm going to be all for that. But um, in terms of Lad, wow, they really want to cheer on the team. Um, <laughs> here, uh, Lad McConkey is currently my 11th overall player. Okay. Yeah. He Makes is sense. right in a range with him, Troy Franklin, who I'm going to bump below Brooks and Benson, um, AD Mitchell. I'm going to rework it a little bit because, again, a guy like Estime, I'm going to have to drop a little bit. Um, a guy like um, AD Mitchell, I'm going to have to raise a little bit because with AD Mitchell, I thought he was going to be a good athlete. I did not remotely see four, Me three, neither. four coming. I thought maybe, okay, he runs well. He can hit four, four, seven, four, four, eight. He weighed in heavier than I thought too, and then yeah. he ran fast. Like I, I was expecting, like pretty identical to Pickens, uh, just like one ninety five, you know, slender guy, four, fine four, straight seven. line speed. Yeah, yeah. No, that that baffled me. That baffled me. Do you have any thoughts on Theo Johnson? He keeps on. I'm taking four twelve Theo Johnson. I'm taking. I'm sorry. I just hey. am. I don't know that I, he's good at football, but he tested well. <laughs> hear me out. I I always say this about guys that played against, but he's got the certified tag for me. I did play against him. You played against Theo Johnson. <laughs> Buddy, big Windsor Canadian? boy. Big Windsor boy. Big Windsor boy. Uh, I believe he was on Essex Ravens back in the day with the boys. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, uh, fun fact. You know who's also from Windsor is Tyrone Crawford, former Cowboy. Former Cowboy. The Give me the Canadian receiver? lore. No, uh, Ty Tyrone Crawford was the defensive lineman. He's good. Oh, okay. He, he was on the Cowboys throughout the 2010s teams. But, uh, yeah, Theo Johnson, I mean, obviously, you know, he's a freak athlete and I mean, I'm not putting it past Penn State, man. Like, they've shown time and time again having these elite athletes and being able to not beat Michigan, not beat Ohio State. I just think, <laughs> to, be, to be frank, James Franklin's not a very good coach. <laughs> oh, no, he's awful. Yeah, so. People, people uh, are saying he looks like Jimmy Graham, and I, I'm pulling up the relative athletic score. I mean, they are close. I mean, 6'6", 260, 4'5", 40, 39-inch vert. I mean, like, that's ridiculous. And, like, the thing is, too, is, like, production doesn't really – like, tight end is the one where, like, you could just – a combine warrior, I have no problem being like, yeah, uh, I'll I'll take Theo Johnson. But I mean, four or five speed, six six, two hundred sixty pounds. I don't think that he's gonna be. I don't think he's gonna be a fourth round pick, and I don't think he's gonna be someone drafted behind AJ Barner and Cade Stover. I, I think you can make a genuine case to have him and JT Sanders as like in the same tier. Um, maybe I'm getting a, over my skis there. I mean, I, that I feel like that's more so going both ways, right? I think JT Sanders goes a little bit too high here. Yeah, can't take him over like Legat, Corum, Lloyd. You know, some of those players, McMillan. Um, but like, if they were both third round picks, I think that would be more appropriate. Is basically where I'm at. Like, if you got Theo Johnson at the three twelve and JT Sanders like the three hundred two, three hundred three, I'd be more comfortable with that. All right, let's. You want to finish it on? Uh, we'll do a, a trade question or two, and then we'll get up out of, of here. Um, Christian Noble. Uh, absolute OG of the channel here. 107 and 203 for AJ Brown. Where are you at on I, that? I think that's about exactly how I'd value him, to be honest. If I'm looking at it, maybe because the name value, you want a little bit of a premium if you're selling AJ Brown. But the way I'm kind of breaking it down is Romo Dunze is going to be a top 14 wide receiver for me in my ranks. And then 203, if I can get access to a Benson, to a Jonathan Brooks if he goes day two, to a Lad McConkey, someone like that, like, I think this is about equal value. Again, if you're trying to consolidate, you're trying to win now, obviously you're going to go A.J. Brown because the point of production year one is going to be so valuable. But if you're tearing it down and somebody's like, yeah, you know what? Like, I'll take A.J. Brown off your hands, 107 plus 203. Maybe you can get more in most leagues, but I'd be comfortable taking this value because that's how I view uh, a guy like Roman Dunze, to be honest. Yeah, I, I tend to kind of agree. I think it, it's tough. I think I would want, like, the 107 holds a lot of weight. I think I would want to try and get, like, a 25 first out of that 203. And if I got to maybe yeah. put my own second on the line or, like, something, you know, very small with A.J. Brown, I think I would. But, yeah, it's not terrible. It just doesn't feel good a first and a second for A.J. Brown. But he's definitely okay. getting to that age where it's, like, it, it's tough to really ask for what you'd want. Um, where do you have Brown ranked in your ranks right now? Brown, I think I have him as, like, an early third. I think I'm as, like, the 301, 212, somewhere around there. Like, maybe wide receiver, like... Eight. I think I have him. Uh, I'm not sure. I think I have him ahead of neighbors, but behind Marv, uh, yeah. right around that, like you know, top eight ish area. 
So that's uh that's the main difference here. Let me just uh, check exactly where I have them on flock right now. Um, so if I go to me, I have a wide receiver eight as my twenty fifth ranked player. So three hundred one is my wide receiver eight. He is currently uh, okay. That is not my rankings. I don't know why he's wide receiver seven. Okay, that that actually didn't. Never mind. Here, give me give me a second. Sorry, let me exactly see where I have him in relation to store startup value right now. My apologies. Um, so in terms of my startup rankings, which I published just six days ago, he is currently my, oh, that's one quarterback here. Super flex Drake. Uh, okay. AJ Brown, a 28th overall player just behind Chris Olave. Okay. So like early third round, like he kind of said early, the mid third round, the difference though, is that I have Romo Dunze as my 36th overall player. Really? I would take him at I don't the 12. I so like you, you have a Dunze. That's been, kind of been a point of contention for me in my rank. So you have him like pretty comfortably over like your Addison, Flowers, Tank Dell, Rashi, uh, Nico, DJ Moore. You have him over Waddle Ayuk. So uh, yes, I do. Uh, I have him huh. over uh, Ayuk. I have higher. So Ayuk's thirty four. I also have the wide receivers for the most part in relation bumped up higher to the running backs. Like I have Rome ahead of like Achan, Kyron, and, and Jonathan Taylor. And I know a lot of people are going to have the running backs a little bit higher there, but like the uh, I like I mentioned, Roma Dunes is number thirty six, Devontae Smith forty three, Waddle forty four, Nico forty five, Rasheed Rice forty six, DJ Moore forty seven. Like I view him as a slight mini tier above a pretty flat tier between like Devontae Smith and I mean even down like you want to put Brian Ra- uh, Brian Thomas Jr. into that tier. I feel like that's pretty flat between like wide receiver sixteen and wide receiver twenty five right now. No, I think that's a good call. I, I think I have him too low in my last update. I have him as like I have Rome as my wide receiver twenty three in my last update, but I think that you make a good point. I, I think I think at the very least you probably have to put him just because he's gonna be a top ten pick. It's a good even though the numbers don't say it, we, we kind of know all the film guys have it this way. Yeah. And I also I know that he's a late breakout, but I, I will say and I, I've sort of challenged I think like uh David Gattiari on Twitter. He's a really young late declare. Like if you, if you were to smart. use, yeah, if you were to use like age, if you were to age adjust instead of experience adjust, he would actually come out a lot better than he does uh, analytically. So I, I, I don't hate that. Like having him kind of like, you know, right next to like Olave Ayuk area, and like that next tier ahead is like a you know mid to late third. So we'll see. I'm probably gonna update things after what we got like free agency next week. So lots coming up here. But anyways, Danny, I appreciate you coming on here, uh, Thanks, you know, brother. carrying the torch from Bush. You got anything to promote or uh, say before we get out of here? Not, I mean, we're streaming on each other's channels, but yeah. I'll uh, play host here for a second. <laughs> I mean, uh, you can find all my work over at Fantasy Stock Exchange on YouTube, at Danny Football 59 over on Twitter. And uh, I mean, yeah, just been pumping up a lot of rookie content recently. We've been grinding. Uh, we're trying to get version 2.0 of our Wall Street Journal over on Flock Fantasy uh, established. Version 1.0, our top 30 prospects that we watched at that in, uh, iteration. Top 50, uh, once we get through 50, 55, 60 guys, we'll have you guys covered full four rounds, obviously, 48 picks. We'll have you covered with 50 guys for your rookie drafts. But, yeah, we've just been pumping about a lot of rookie content, uh, really getting a good grasp now on this class, especially uh, at one point I wasn't really sure what to make of the running backs. Now I'm a little bit deeper in the class. I can confirm I've watched nine of the guys so far, so. Yeah, I mean, we know the buzz about the wide receivers. We know the buzz about the quarterbacks starting to get into the running backs, and we'll have you guys all updated with that. Hell yeah. I'm sure you'll have the uh, the Isaiah oh, yeah. Davis tape grinded in no time. However, you're <laughs> going to find the South Dakota State uh, running backs up. But Lance has them pretty high for a like uh, no-name uh, school guy. But regardless, I appreciate you coming on here, Danny. Hey, Same thing for me. We're doing rookie content all across the board. I'm going to have rookie – I'm going to try and do like a top 30 – like a rough top 36 probably in the next like 24 hours. So – Stay tuned for that. That'll be on the Patreon, patreon.com slash Ron Stewart. But as always, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one.